The 78th edition of the Tour de Suisse kicked off last week and the riders could look forward to 1,323 kilometres of racing through stunning Swiss scenery. Could world champion Rui Costa make it a hat-trick of victories in the final warm-up before this year's Tour de France? Tony Martin of Omega Farmer Quickstep made light of the hilly parkour to record a fine victory in the opening time trial in Bellinzona. The world time trial champion picked up where he left off at the recent Tour of Belgium and simply had too much for his rivals over the testing 9.4 kilometre course. Martin beat Tom Dumoulin of Giant Shimano by six seconds and Garmin Sharp's Rowan Dennis by 13, while home favourite Fabian Cancellara of Trek Factory Racing had to settle for fourth place a further three seconds back. That's how the top ten looked after the opening stage. On to stage two, at a hilly 182 kilometres from Bellinzona to Sonnen awaited the peloton. At a year on from TT success, Cameron Meyer of Orica Green Edge claimed another Swiss victory. He would outsprint his breakaway companions, Team Sky's Philip Dignan and Laurie Warbass of BMC. The trio were the three remaining survivors of a six man break that went clear after 15 kilometres and stretched out their advantage to four minutes over the climbs of the Gotthard Pass, Fulka Pass, and Grimsel Pass, which were tackled in wet and cold conditions. Cameron Meyer, the winner, with Tony Martin retaining his overall lead, six seconds ahead of Tom Dumoulin and 13 clear of Rohan Dennis. Stage 3 presented the riders with 203 kilometres of tough terrain from Sun and to Haydn, and after sustaining a severe concussion from the previous day's crash, Frank Schleck retired from the race. All eyes were on Peter Sagan of Cannondale, and he timed his sprint to perfection to win Stage 3, finishing ahead of Mikhail Albazini of Orica Green Edge and Team Sky's Sergio Nau. Overnight leader Tony Martin remained in contention through the tricky uphill finish and he would go on to retain his race lead, but it would be Sagan in the points jersey celebrating the win. Dumoulin remained second, Sagan moved to third. The sun came out for the riders as they lined up at the start in Haydn for 160 kilometres of stage four of the Tour de Suisse and it would be another chance for the sprinters to notch up a victory. Sagan was the man to watch after his win on stage three, but it was Mark Cavendish who took the spoils. The Omega Pharma Quickstep team looked like they'd lost control of the front of the peloton when Giant Shimano brought the group into the final kilometre. But when Korn de Court pulled off, he looked back to see that it wasn't John Degenkoll behind him, but Cavendish's teammate Mark Renshaw. Cav were going to win. At the start of stage five, more riders would retire from the field, the main casualty being former Tour de France winner Brad Wiggins. A crash on stage four left him with a bruised knee and the Brit decided that it would be best to refocus for the national time trial later in the month. After 183 kilometres of racing, it was the last 500 metres that proved to be the most difficult, with two tight, twisty turns awaiting the sprinters and with so many riders looking for victory on this stage, the jostling for position was intense. A crash brought down Mark Cavendish, but it was Sagan who bounced his way out of being boxed in and jumped first with Sacha Modolo timing his jump perfectly and taking a convincing victory. Modolo with the biggest win of his career to date. Race leader Tony Martin was caught up behind the crash but didn't lose any time and remained in yellow. Stage six presented the peloton with 184 kilometers of hilly terrain and race leader Martin answered any queries as to whether he'd be able to climb up hills by leading the peloton through the Flamme Rouge to help his teammate Matteo Trentin claim his first stage win of this year. Already the third of the week for his team. The second and final individual time trial would prove decisive for this year's Tour de Suisse. If race leader Tony Martin had any hope of keeping the yellow jersey all the way to the finish of stage nine, he'd need to inflict a serious time deficit on his rivals. One name missing from the start list was Team Sky's Sergio Nau. He was struck by a car on the recce ride earlier that day, and unfortunately he is now ruled out for the rest of the season. First to throw down the gauntlet was home favorite Fabian Cancellara. 
PT King Tony Martin's main rival would be Rui Costa, a master tactician who knew he had to limit his losses to the German powerhouse, and he did so by only losing 28 seconds to Martin, who kept a grip on the overall lead. The Tour de Suisse centred the mountains during the penultimate stage, which was the first of two mountain top finishes. The peloton raced 219 kilometres from Dulemont to Velbier, with one major climb at the end of the stage that began with a Category 3 section and finished with an all category section en route to the finish line. It'd be a true test of the leader's grit. The attacks coming thick and fast, splitting the peloton as they went through, but Martin answered each beautifully and even managed to put some climb into his two nearest rivals. In the end, it would be Colombian Esteban Chavez who climbed a victory, with Tony Martin still on top of the GC. His lead, 51 seconds. Would it be enough going into the final stage, though? Esteban Chavez taking his biggest ever win. If stage eight was difficult, then 157 kilometers of the final test into Sars Fe was arguably tougher, with more mountains to tackle. In his quest to make history by winning his third Tour de Suisse in a row, Rui Costa found allies in Valka Mollema and Matthias Frank, an attack from a big group of riders on the penultimate climb to distance the yellow jersey. Martin would put up a brave fight on the long valley road into the final 20 kilometers climb to the finish, but world champion Costa was strong and took advantage of some great work by Belkin and I Am Cycling before attacking alone in the final three kilometers to take the stage win and claim the overall victory, the first in the stripes of the world champion.